Around 300 years ago, some guy named Thomas Newcomen made a simple invention that literally powered one of the biggest turning points in all of history. The Industrial Revolution is responsible for pretty much everything in modern society, like cars and planes and rockets and computers and the internet and most of our technology. It's also responsible for a whole bunch of problems, like being forced to eat at Panda Express or having to stress over having a million projects due on the same day. The Industrial Revolution had the biggest impact on the world. Of course, there is the American Revolution, which liberated one of the greatest countries in the history of mankind. A statement made by, guess who, Americans. There was the French Revolution, which led to the rise of one of the greatest military geniuses. Oh yeah, there was the Russian Revolution, inspiring George Orwell and many English teachers around the world to assign projects on corruption and socialism and, well, pigs. Seriously, why is everything a revolution? Anyways, back to the Industrial Revolution. In the early 1700s, England was competing against India and China to create cheaper textiles and cloth. But China and India were already far ahead, and the only advantage Britain had was their ample supply of coal for cheap energy. Coal helps with cloth because it allows new inventions such as the flying shuttle and the spinning jenny that need a power source. The problem of mining coal was that the mines constantly flooded. This is where our friend Thomas Newcomen comes in. Thomas Newcomen made the first successful steam engine created to pump water out of coal mines. And this led to a bunch of other steam engines which were made into locomotives, boats, and all sorts of cool transportation. All this came just because Britain wanted to be rich. Even though the Industrial Revolution led to cars and trucks and planes and ships and more cars and robots and the internet and basically my entire life, it also led to a big problem in today's society. Unions. So you might say unions are a good thing. People get fair treatment, workers cannot be exploited, but no, it isn't good to have every in and out worker on strike because then I might have to go eat at a Panda Express. But how did all of this come? So when the industrial revolution came into full swing, the jobs moved from the farms to the factories, and factory work requires no skill, and the rich got a weird habit of enlisting little kids to do their work. But life in a factory is harsh. Every child works long hours in a factory around dangerous machines. And if you get injured, too bad, you're fired. Now let's just go get the next little kid off the street. Heck, these kids had it so bad, they would probably think school was a paradise. Messed up, right? And this leads to unions. Some caring people, for some reason, decided that they did not want child labor. So they brought all the children together and demanded better working conditions. They all lined up by the factory headquarters and chanted and held their little signs until, after a long standoff, the factory owners all came together and signed an official looking sheet of paper that granted better working environments and no child labor. But no one really knew because most people in that time were illiterate. Just kidding, this didn't really happen. Please don't put that on your DBQ. But the kids needed somewhere to go. And voila, public education. All children now have an entire governmental branch dedicated to them, which pays for schools and teachers. And all these teachers need something great to do, like assign homework and projects and make tests to make sure students are never bored. But that's a story for another day. Okay, to sum it up, the Industrial Revolution is responsible for everything good the internet, computers, video games, texting, Facebook, you name it. But it's also the reason why you are all stressing and probably procrastinating for those projects due tomorrow and the reason that one day I may be forced to eat at a Panda Express. Everything good, everything bad, all caused by the British and their desire to make more money 300 years ago.